Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the public participation portion of the meeting. As a reminder, time limits for all speakers will be adhered to. There is no sharing or granting of speaking time to others. Speakers must be present when their name is called. All speakers are required to give names and addresses. The public participation portion of the meeting is limited to one hour and 30 minutes. Examples of unacceptable behavior that will not be permitted include, but are not limited to, naming district employees, engaging in personal attacks, slurs, excessive loudness, calling out, yelling, generally disruptive behavior, attempting to disrupt meetings, or inciting others to do so. Public participation at board meetings is intended to allow individual members of the public the opportunity to address the board and administration on issues of public concern, not as a forum for two-way dialogue with board members. The superintendent or designee or Madam Chair may respond to questions either at the end of the public participation session or responses may be provided at a later time. The superintendent or chair may interrupt any speaker or terminate any individual speaking privileges if the speaker's comments are disruptive or obscene. An individual may be cautioned that a personally directed statement may be slanderous or defaming, and that individual may be liable for his or her comments. Finally, attempts to hijack or filibuster the proceedings, repeated interrupting or badgering the board chair or officials, repetitive and truculent speech, or other disregard for rules of decorum are not tolerated and may subject the individual group to removal from the meeting. If necessary, the meeting may be adjourned. Thank you. First speaker, Shamanique Jones. Next speaker, speaker, Kwamira Folger. Next speaker, Zania Williams. Next speaker, Jamira Armstrong. Kalia Hightower. Janaya Lowe, Janaya Jones, Diamond Jones, Saida Williams, Tanasia Raham, Raham, Tiana Torres, Amani Lynn, Marquel Horn, Shantasia Davis. Ashia Campbell, Anaya Jones, Keshawn Gallinger, Keshai, Keshai Gallagher, Alexis Matheson, Samaya Williams, Kwame Taylor, Jaqua Hightower, Sincere Williams, Trivon Monroe, Ira Streeter, Margaret Barnes Williams, Patience Roberts, Thomas Ibiang, I'm sorry, and you are? Good afternoon. Hello. Um, my name is Patience Roberts. I'm a parent and I have both children that attend the North Public Schools. Um, I'm very upset about what's going on with the whole reform education thing that's happening in North. I don't see how is this helping our kids in any way. My thing is, if it works for one school and it's successful and it's helping the kids, implement it in all of the schools. Every child deserves a quality education. Having some have access and the rest not, that's just recipe for a disaster. And every time I come to the public school advisory board meeting, there's always a parent or a teacher or somebody that's involved with barrenture. 
that have complaints about what's going on in Barrington. I don't, I mean, a child already passed away. I don't know what else it's gonna take for somebody to actually assess what is going on in Barringer. A child should not have had to die. It should not have come to this. There's an issue at Barringer, just like there are many issues throughout the district. But when you hear it at every board meeting and still nothing seems to be getting done, like, can you really sit up there and be like, you care about all the kids in Newark? Come on now, it's ridiculous. Get it together. Thank you. Is your name on the list, sir? Yes. Yes, you're the next speaker, if that's your name. Um, I shouldn't have been, I, I didn't even want to come to the meeting, because y'all usually don't listen like y'all do it right now, and I'm talking to you over there, having your own conversation. Um, I came to Malcolm X Shabazz to, um, to really see if Cammy Anderson was going to show up here. Malcolm X will be rolling over in his grave right now. Everything that he's still for, you are against. What you're doing to our community, breaking our community apart with the charter school and the public school that's not well funded, trying to rip away the unions from the teachers, it speaks volumes about who you are as a person. Like, I don't know where you think you're going to go from here. You may have most of the people fooled, but those that really read and study and understand that art and science did not start with the Greeks or the Romans or wherever people you have in that back over there, they see the stuff that you're doing. They see the crimes you're committing. The kid that died that y'all had, y'all y'all put your head down to, pray to Lord, whatever God you pray to, I knew him personally. I coached his little brother on the basketball team. We went to his house before we came here to find out if you, Cammy Anderson, went to that house. Because I see you on TV. You care about our kids, these are all our kids. You're lying. When your kids start going to the schools and are dying, then you could tell me you care about this kid, kids. But you're not, you know where in our projects. You don't deal with the things we deal with. That's why you can come up here and say what's wrong with our school is the teachers. You don't come out and say it. You come about in a roundabout way, teacher evaluation. Who is evaluating you? When you leave from here five years, two, three years, and with your money, over 200 or whatever you're making, when you leave and go, who's going to G-check you to find out like if you really did your job, like your predecessor and your predecessor before that? You see, you always blame the people with no mic and no voice. That's what your point at. It's the parents, it's the teachers, it's the community. We're gonna listen to the community. We're gonna try to get what the community say. We're gonna input it. You're lying. Everybody told you they ain't want no them arm leases. You vetoed it. I mean, you can cut the mic off. I'm gonna still keep talking. Like, y'all keep jerking wreck up here. But I get off parole in May. We gotta turn this thing up, man. Y'all want a revolution, man? Y'all gotta turn it up. This is not a revolution. I don't care if you're Spanish. I don't care if you're Spanish, you're black, you're white. It's not about race. They use race to divide us. But it's really about money and power. We sit here and we let this shoe shuffling house Negro sit up there and sell our lives away. We cannot do that no more. Hey, yo, I want to see you read this up here. Because I believe 80% um, of the teachers should live in these communities. I believe what you wrote. They should not believe it. You, you should read this today. Let everybody in here understand what you wrote. Now, man, like they should not be going somewhere else. They should be invested in this community. Then when they go home, like I went home yesterday and found out two people got shot in my building, they understand that. They feel that, and they fight for that. But when you have people up there that don't live here, they'll keep treating you like that, suckers. Next speaker, Lucius Jones. Is Mr. Jones here? Okay.
Good afternoon, advisory board. Good evening, advisory board members, audience. Lucius Jones, 107 Ivy Street, Newark, New Jersey. I like to say at the beginning of uh, public participation that 24 of my kids were scheduled to be here tonight, and thanks to the support of uh, some uh, staff at Two Cedar Street who kind of called ahead of time. So my kids are at Pizza Hut enjoying the celebration, knowing that uh, very soon that we're going to start to discuss the money that they deserve in their school. You know, some people think that they should take the kids to Science Park or to NJ Pack. You know, my kids want more than that. They want to see the Wax Museum, the Schomburg Museum. They just don't want to go to any zoo. They want to go where they can be enriched and they can be empowered and they can have information. So my conversation tonight is really going to start with three things. Student achievement, parent involvement, and partnership. The student achievement please, piece I've been saying all along, that student schools that are in need of improvement can't improve if we keep cutting dollars out of the classroom. I don't care how smart you think the teachers are, how brilliant you think they are, if you don't have the right resources in the classroom, along with that brilliant teacher, this is not going to have the type of success that you need to have in the school. When you go to some schools and they have 100% smart boards, they have computers that pop out of the, the desk that they're sitting in like they have at North Star uh, uh, or, or at Steve Out of Bottle School down at uh, Robert Tree. When you look at how technology is integrated into the, into the school, when the kids can really, really, they benefit so much more when they have this type of technology. But when you also look at 13th Avenue School and all the renewed school and how much money we're throwing into those schools as renewed school. But renewed schools look to me more like recycled schools. And we need to really talk about, if it's going to be really renewed, then let's, let's take those models we have at 13th Avenue and other, those other buildings, and let's bring all those facility changes and technology changes to all of the schools. Why should Ivy Hill, for example, have to have smart boys only in from third to eighth grade and leave out the second and first grade because we don't, we don't have enough money? Why should we have to uh, 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 not buy workbooks Instead of buying the whole series, we, we piece everything. Some people say we newark it. My other thing that we need to be concerned about is the parental involvement piece. The parental involvement piece in Newark Public School is in the shambles. There, when I learned as a parent in K-8, to I learned every 90% of everything I know through workshops within the K-8 to structure. I'm not, not seeing K-8 workshop happening anywhere in the town. What's going on to the type of training for kindergarten parents and second grade parents and third grade parents? What's, you know, it's no connection between parental involvement and what's happening at Tuesday Cedar Street. While at the same time, the district turns around and they, were, and they close all of the region schools, every last one of them, in a, uh, uh, they did it sneakingly. They, they redirected the phone number to 7311 or 4311 where parents had to call a central office while at the same time they shut all the regions down. Let's talk about that. What's going to happen when these parents from all over the city get down, have to come down to Two Cedar Street and who's going to pay their parking fee? It costs $10 to park downtown. And they're going to be standing in line in the rain like 50 Clinton. You know, my, the last but not least is the partnership. Ms. Cam, Ms. Anderson, I told most of my board friends that I wasn't going to come and speak again. But I think this is the only opportunity that I really get to speak to you. I have a serious problem with this partnership stuff. You know, I said to you, I watch you on TV, and you clap, 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 and you say, read, baby, read, and you really get down. And I sit back and I say, is this real? Is it real? Because there's no partnership with the parents. There's no partnership with the students. You have a lot of work to do to meet not only the requirements of Norkers, to even meet your contract requirements. Your contract requirement requires you, according
according to what you signed, that you were going to improve parental involvement in this district. It's at a all-time low. And I'd like to know what are you going to do about it? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Next speaker, Ada Carroll. Good night, everybody. Good evening. Um, I am, my name is Ada Carroll. I am a parent at Lafayette Street School. And uh, I live in 60 Union Street. I have two daughters at this school. Um, and the reason why I am here today is because we want to ask, we, we want to talk about the playground at our school. Um, I'm going to read what I prepare. I'm a much better reader than speaker. Uh, we, the parents of Lafayette Street School students, ask that the playground condition at our school be addressed. Lafayette Street School services 1,200 children daily. At it, it has one of the smallest and inadequate recreational areas in the, in the district for the kids. The conditions of this playground are inadequate for children to be playing in it. There are holes in the asphalt, there are loose asphalt, there are small rocks. It's, it's in disrepair, it's in total disrepair, this place. And um, children are asked not to run at the playground because they can get hurt, they can fall and get hurt. And you know, they keep sending the kids to the nurse almost daily. And keeping the children from running and playing is just impossible for the children to do. And also for the aides and the volunteers, parent volunteers that are there and taking care of them. Um, moreover, there are cars parked in the playground and uh, we find that unacceptable. It's not really a playground, it's a parking lot. And there's no separation between the cars being parked there and the children playing. The children, um, they don't have, they cannot play with balls or with any other kind of equipment because um, people, you know, administration is afraid that damage is gonna be caused to the cars. Now I want to stress the importance of uh, creative play in children. It's been proven that creative play it's an essential part of child development, and all plans of moving Newark education ahead is fruitless if we ignore the two basics, active creative play and healthier foods. And does it mean that I don't have much time to speak? Uh, well, background history. Playground has been illegally used as a for-profit parking lot for the sports club Portuguese for years. Locks are installed and they get broken and they get back in, observing for the day occasion of the sports club, collect money for parking. Back in June of this year, we had a meeting with uh, uh, the vice principal, the, vice, the principal, vice principal of our schools, the officers of our homeschool association, and some other parents, uh, me included, with Ms. Mallory Wilson, the school, business, business, the school district business administrator, to discuss these issues, and she promised her that this problems would be taken care of, and the sports club would stop parking there. Uh, it stopped parking momentarily, and um, the school they patched, they you know they kind of patched the asphalt that was loose and in bad repairs. But we really want more than that, and I, I really need more time to speak to you about this. Um, there are permits that are being signed. Uh, thank you, ma'am. I see that you have notes. We would be very happy if you want to give us uh, something in writing. It would be distributed to all of the board members, if you would like to do that. Yes, yes, you can. Thank you very much. We'll definitely follow up with you. Thank, thank you, ma'am. We will take the time to read the information. And just for clarity, 
the first bell rings after two minutes, and then this is for all speakers, and then you have an additional minute. Thank you very much. Our next speaker, Johnny Latner. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Johnny Latner, 60 Telebert Street, and I'm the co-founder of Pulse. And good evening, students, parents, community, advisory board, Superintendent Anderson, and other guests from Jersey City and Patterson. Harold, Melvin, and the Blue Notes had a number one song, Wake Up Everybody, No More Sleeping in Bed. Well, tonight, I like to rename it, Wake Up Newark. It's time to work together. Parents, teachers, students, community, and advisory board. Wake Up Newark to the path of disfranchisement and the total disrespect that's shown toward the community, advisory board, teachers, parents, and many of the thousands of students that have been pushed out by our co-locations, turnarounds, hyper, re renewal, or whatever you want to call it in the past two years. Wake up Newark to the plan that the federal DOE, Arnold du Artie Duncan, Governor Christie, Mayor Booker, the state education of SURF and Superintendent Anderson, where the plan includes us but excludes us in the process without community input, but a lot of community outcry. Wake up Newark to the administrative staff and support staff being demoted, transferred, or fired because of close relationships with the parents in the community while hiring individuals that can't and won't relate to the community. Wake up Newark to teachers' morale low with, current, with the current battle of the contract with asked teachers to give back two years like they didn't work for it. I would like to ask you, superintendent, or any other administrative staff, would you do that? No. Wake up Newark, we need to demand for local control because she don't respect you as an elected board parents, community, as a whole. Wake up and knew it. She's carrying out the plan like a puppet on a string. We must work together towards making sure all students receive the best education that the community be not only the plan, but involved in the process and the beginning, middle, and end. Let's stop school closings and build them with, and fix them resources and give them resources where students, teachers, and community can work together. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Latner. Our next speaker, Betty Crockett. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm not a parent at the school but I call myself a neighborhood lover in the village here. And what I'm looking for, because the children in the village affects me, affects the rest of the neighbors, I want the best for them as far as the education. I want the school closing to stop. I want y'all to work harder to get back the control, the control of the school system here. I want you all to work harder. You know who I voted for. You know me. I want something to happen. And I want something to happen good for these children. And I'm not gonna take too much time. But like I said, I have no children in the school system here. But I live here. And you're my neighbor. Thank you. Arnold B. William. Audrea Jackson. Audrea Jackson. Okay. 
Miss J. So Miss J, 7th Avenue, Clinton Avenue. Anybody here with that name? Vanessa Roper. Wilhelmina Holder. Good evening, good evening. Good evening. Wilhelmina Holder, I'm sorry I was outside. Sometimes you just can't stomach what you hear. Um, Tonight, I, I have a, a strong interest in finding out from the superintendent what is the plan, uh, other than destruction. Um, I've read bad plans. I've been part of good plans, mediocre plans. And what I see to, um, going on right now is no plan. As someone said, when you carry out someone else's orders, you need to put yourself in the position, can I be true to myself as a parent, and you are a parent? It's not just about the money for us. It's about my grandchildren and everyone else's grandchildren. I looked at the um, ACT scores, the results. Now I have to put some of that at your foot because that was dismal. The results are in single digits in most cases. We didn't get the school by school analysis that we normally do so we can see where we can put extra resources and extra help for the teachers and the students. So I don't know why we are paying these data analysis people hundreds of thousands of dollars not to give us deep down resources and information. We said we're going college and credit re readiness, yet principals are without money in their budgets to support a college credit, credit preparedness for our students. Um, the democrats again lied. They said this number of children would be in the schools and more children showed up at the neighborhood schools. Did the principals get the money back to support those children? That's something that's very important to us. The professional development. The teachers are not getting what they need either. That's the other piece. We hire people to do professional development. I know for a fact that one session was held this past week or the week before and they were talking to elementary school teachers about how to adapt ninth and 10th grade lessons to fourth, fifth, and sixth grade teachers. And then they told the teachers have high expectations, but yet they did not profile the lesson. There was no video, no interaction. So after four hours, I get calls from people saying, what is going on? They had a cup of coffee and they got a big headache. And that's a problem for me as a grandparent because our children will be harmed by this kind of practice. You cannot take money, in some cases I call it stealing money, from the neighborhood children, short them from Title I monies, and say you're doing the best for all of the children. Even the reform schools, I was active at 13th Avenue and still am. That is not a panacea by no ways. We have teachers who are highly unqualified teaching autistic children. A high school teacher, science teacher teaching a third grade autistic child and no notice went home to the parents. There's a law. The parents should know who is in front of their children. There's a law. It's a massive disrespect. So in order for us to talk about collaboration, we should be collaborating. But this is not collaboration when you disrespect the community and the parents because they have a 07103 through 07112 zip code. That is not. Thank you, Ms. Holder. Thank you. I need results, and we need to work together to make that happen. And Madam Chair, if they're not giving you the data and the board the data, it's time for us to do something different as a community. Thank you. Thank you. Lyndon Brown. Good evening, Lyndon Brown, 220 South 6th Street in Newark. Um, again, I'm requesting a rollout, a community presentation of the spring 2012 NJS scores for the district. 
you know, ward by ward, school by school if need be. We have not seen them. We're preparing our students for NJS 2013, and we haven't even seen the results of 2012. I think it's a travesty. Accountability. We still have too many, far too many students who are special needs students whose IEP mandates them to have certain services. Um, some of them are supposed to have a shared aid or personal aid. Some of them have been getting suspended and been getting into trouble. Uh, classroom management has been very difficult for some of the teachers because those personal aids are not there for those children. The first cycle is almost over. We're going into second cycle and what's been mandated and what's been in place in the IEP for over two years, but now all of a sudden the aids cannot be uh, uh, given to these students and the parents are complaining. My phone's ringing off the hook. Autonomy is just a travesty um, for some of our administrators who just are clueless in how to run a school. Some of our administrators are doing a fantastic job, but you've given autonomy to first-year principals who, who definitely need mentoring and monitoring, and it's not being done. And our children are the ones who are being uh, shortchanged. Our renewed schools were supposed to have four components, which include a wraparound, uh, uh, technology, um, GED and ESL classes for parents, and extended learning days. And that's only happening at several schools. Why is it that principals decide parents don't need a GED class or ESL classes in the, in the community? Was a survey done? I don't think so. Parental involvement, we have administrators getting too involved in PTA and PTO matters, trying to um, manipulate the uh, election process, and that needs to stop. And I, I think the um, No Child Left Behind waiver has caused uh, setbacks in a lot of our schools because for the past five or 10 years, many of our children have been able to um, access free tutorial. You know, some had tutors coming to their homes, and now all tutoring is school-based. Who's monitoring to make sure that tutorial has been provided for our children at the school-based level? Title I funding, was a lot of it was held over last year. Three or four million dollars was not spent, yet we have children who are three and four and five grade levels behind. That's ridiculous. Security at some of our schools is understaffed. I go to some schools, I see that they have eight and nine and 10 security guards at 13th Avenue School. We have almost 1,200 kids. We have four security guards. I went over to E. Alma Flag. They have um, five administrators, five vice principals. I go to 13th Avenue School. You have four, all female with 1,200 students, and the majority of them are first year vice principals. You put these people in these schools, failing schools, eight, nine, 10 years failing with no experience. I think it's just a travesty. Between the nepotism and autonomy, enough is enough. Thank you. Next speaker, Janice Reedus. Madam Chair. Excuse me, the next Madam speaker is Janice Reedus. I'll be her, I'll be her. I'm Madam sorry, Chair. sir, the next speaker is Janice Reedus. I have a student here. I have a student here that wants to talk to the board. She's deaf. Her teacher got laid off and she came here to Sir, the, the next, I'm, I'm sorry to, uh, interrupt you, but you are not the next speaker. I have no problem. We will, we, will, we, will address, we will address what you are talking about, but right now we have to move on the speaker's list. We will address your issue. Thank you. Is Janice Reedus here? Next speaker, Deborah Smith Gregory. Good evening. Good evening. The race to the top is due October 30th. It's a 200 plus page document. Can it be thoughtful and painstaking and methodically completed with a one hour public meeting at United Way? Break out the, 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 um, the scores, by school, not by race and gender. Stop the race. That, that display, uh, that was very cursory. Um, what is the hierarchy of this district? What does it mean enrollment and audit of, of these schools where it's so-and-so school? What are the names of the schools? What are the names of the schools where they're getting more money? 
You said that you did a lot, Superintendent, you said you did a lot to make sure that the students, that the families were engaged with the ACT scores. Exactly what was that? Did you direct them to the website? You know about that website. I keep complaining about it. The test scores for HESPER have not been released to the community, so we can gauge our young, how our young family, our young people are doing. You say it's because um, it's not a rigorous test. However, that is the test that is used for graduation right now. So that test cannot be discounted. The dismal ACT scores should be analyzed, dissected, addressed, but I submit to you that there should be prep for the test in the high school because the ACT in the high school is a college entrance exam, just like the SAT. The SAT and, and ACT preps are done in suburban districts as early as the seventh grade. We, for us to just throw that, that test at the students, it, it's just not fair. It's absolutely not fair. That ACT, uh, ACT, SAT prep class should be integrated, or at the very least, because you keep saying we have this extended learning time, at least offer it there. Um, what will be done to get them ready? What will be done to get our students ready? Our students are brilliant. We keep getting these negative reports, and I know that there's a lot of work to be done, but I rarely hear anything positive coming out of this board. And as Lucia says about the families, we want to be engaged. No, I do not have students that are young people who are directly in a public school, but I am a taxpayer, and I do volunteer to work in schools. Finally, here is an example that you can follow. It is important to see what can happen within a school as opposed to always separating out of school. Look at Malcolm X Chavez High School. Thank you. Next speaker, Iman Brown. Next speaker, Donald Jackson. Good evening, Donald Jackson, 80 Johnson Avenue, Newark, New Jersey, 07108. And if you didn't realize what that address was, you're sitting in 80 Johnson Avenue. You know, it's just so much stuff going on. And I'm, and I'm sitting in the back talking to myself, and I'm like, where, where do I begin? Where do I begin? And, and let's talk about parental involvement for a second, because see, the district don't want no real involvement. The district does not want any real parent involvement, okay? Because if you did, you know who to go to. You know who to talk to, okay? You got Mr. Brown in the building now. You got Ms. Holden in the building now. You got Mr. Latin in the building now. You got Ms. Sharon Smith in the building now. See, if you want a real parental involvement, you will go to the right people and not pay consultants and pay people hundreds and thousands of dollars Okay, to make up fake meetings, okay, and get nothing done. Because at the end of the day, no public schools is in distress. And our children, our students, my family is hurting, okay? All these consultants we pay to do nothing, to look good, to drive these fancy cars. At the end of the day, our kids not eating. Are we serious? And this board, I'm, I'm very highly upset at all of you guys. Ms. Anderson, unfortunately, I have to say this. Your attitude doesn't show me that you care. We lost a student from Barringer High School over some nonsense, killed, over something I'm sure could have been involved if this board didn't lay off the social workers, could have got worked out in the school, okay? If this board kept the good programs that we had in this district. None of this stuff is new. We got stuff in this district that's working now that we don't utilize. We had stuff that we didn't utilize. When are we gonna do the work? When is this board gonna get up and do some work? Our kids are hurting out here. No one is getting serviced. 13th Avenue School, for example, all of those special needs students not getting serviced. It's criminal. And no one on this board got anything to say about that? It's criminal. And we sitting in here quiet? 
We talking about promoting future, sending kids to school. How are we doing that when we're not giving our students the education that they need, the services that they need, okay? Every month, we got this fake presentation going up on the board on what you're trying to do, when you're not working with the real people to do it. One note I wanted to talk about is the drug problem we got in our schools. You got rid of the SAT coordinators. That was a brilliant idea. Our kids coming into school, 8.30 in the morning, high, out they mind. What are we doing about that? Nothing. What programs we have in place? None. But yet again, we just gonna sit up here quiet, looking at me like I'm crazy. Like I don't know what I'm talking about. You're hurting the teachers. You're putting all this stress on the teachers in the building. They can't teach. They got so much garbage they gotta deal with. They can't teach the kids. What is going on? Okay? The Thank community you, Mr. is Jackson. tired. The city of Newark is tired. You better do something. It's Thank getting you, Mr. real Jackson. hot. It's getting real hectic. No one's listening. Mr. Saying, Jackson, thank you, thank you very much. We on hear what you. I'm telling thank you, Mr. Jackson. See, when you say thank you and you don't work on my issues or you don't work on the issues Mr. that Jackson, you Jackson, we do hear you, but you your listen. time is up, sir. Thank you. You're right. My time is up. Have a good evening. Next speaker, Veronica Williamson. Next speaker, Donna Jackson. Next speaker, Annette Alston. Annette Alston, Newark Teachers Association president, teacher, 26 years. Every new reform that Newark Public School has had forced on it as of late has been detrimental to our children, students, and the teaching learning profession. We have closed community schools, now turned to charter schools that are no longer open to the community. Children can't go there after school to play in the playground or shoot basketball because it's considered private property. Parents have about as much control over the curriculum or what happens in a charter school as they do in a district school. None. The reforms within the district school amount to modern witch hunts. Witch hunts which create a climate of fear and intimidation. Teachers have called me stating that their administrator told them that anything that they say in meetings or are heard saying around the school can be used against them in an evaluation. They were told lies like if they are late one minute for five days, they can lose a day's pay or lose an increment. We know that the rule is three, five, seven. And about the increment, considering we haven't had one in three years, that shouldn't even be considered a threat. Based on the current proposed contract, teachers may not see an increment for another three years. The central office had so many hearings last year that they could not keep up with them. So what did they do? They started hearings again this year, based on tardy records of the previous year. The nurse I represented was not late at all this year, was threatened with losing three days pay for being late 19 times last year. Most of the time, of that time, she was like one minute late. We spent more time away from our students for that particular hearing than all of her late times a hundredfold. Speaking of the new evaluation tool, there is so much riding on evaluations that teachers are literally breaking down psychologically, physically, spiritually. Administrators come in with a clipboard, write down every misstep, and call that an evaluation, or can't tell evidence from their left cheek. Many of these evaluations are so poorly written that they ought to be more concerned about their own competency than that of the teacher they are supposed to be evaluating. <laughs> then there's merit pay. I don't have time to get into the litany of problems associated with merit pay that are, again, harmful to our children and the teaching profession. So I'll just say that the carrot and stick reform has not worked anywhere. They tried it in New York, and it failed last year. They tried it in Chicago in 2006, and it failed. Michigan has a law for, merit pay, law for merit pay, and school districts are violating it. There was a comprehensive test trial in Tennessee, and in 2010, it failed. 75% of the merit pay program started about 1983 due to the Nation at Risk study um, uh, were gone by 1993. According to Diane Ravitch, education historian, merit pay has been tried over and over again and since the 1920s. 
and has failed every time. Studies conducted by Vanderbilt University's National Center for Performances and Centers in 2010 has the most thorough trial of ter teacher merit pay. The results have proven that merit pay makes no difference. Why? Teachers would like to make more money, but still most work as hard as they can, whether they get a bonus or not. Thank Here's you, Ms. Austin. Teachers Excuse me, I know Austin. that are coming to work early, staying late, seriously sleep depraved, and going in their pockets and supplementing Thank you, Ms. Austin. that the school should be providing are still getting poor ratings or less than that required to reach that daggone carry. Ms. Austin. The teacher, the administrator, Ms. Austin. Thank you, Ms. Austin. So that his or her paperwork is completed. The school board, Austin. the superintendent who puts the shoddy practice. Thank you very place, much, Ms. Austin. Has proven to simply be an excuse to exploit teachers. Thank you, Ms. Austin. Good night. Okay, Ms. Austin, we're trying to proceed with the meeting. Ms. Austin, Ms. please Austin. observe the rules of the quorum. Officer West, please remove Ms. Alston. And that concludes our public speaking uh, segment for this evening.